we're here to protect you and the, and the ones that you love. It's a good feeling to know that our efforts aren't going unnoticed. It actually brought tears to my eyes to know that we have this support. You're welcome. I must just say, you're welcome. It's stressful, but we're not going anywhere. Welcome to another edition of Bucknell Men's Golf Through the Decades. Tonight we have the decade of the 1970s. We've got some outstanding alums joining head coach Mike Binney and one of our current student athletes on the team, sophomore Jackson Bussell from Lincolnshire, Illinois. I want to thank Jackson for joining us tonight. My name is Todd Newcomb, and I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank Geisinger as our sponsor for tonight's event. Geisinger has done a great job throughout the pandemic. And as always, they do a super job day in and day out with our student athletes here at Bucknell. So thank you to Geisinger. I'm going to get to the introductions, introduce our alums, and then I'll turn it over to Coach Binney. So our first guest from the class of 1973 is Dan Stetz. Dan was a three-year letter winner and a team captain in 1973. He led the team with a 77.2 average in 1972, and he finished as the runner-up at the 1973 MAC Championship. Our next guest from the class of 1974 is Mickey Sinkus. He was a four-year letter winner and a team captain in 1974. His best individual finish at the MAC Championships was sixth, coming also in that very same year, 1974. Our next guest from the class of 1976 is Chick Wagner four-year letter winner and team captain in both 1975 and 1976. Chick set a then school and Bucknell Golf Club competitive course record with a round of 66 in 1975. It's now the second lowest round in Bucknell golf history. And he set the then Bucknell scoring records with a 73.8 season average and a 76.4 career average. Chick led the team in scoring average in both 75 and 76. His best individual finish at the ECC Championships was third in 1976. He won the ECAC Fall Championship in 1975. He was an individual NCAA tournament qualifier in both 1975 and 1976. And Chick won the Edward W. Pangburn Award at the Athletic Department Senior Awards Dinner. He was inducted into the Bucknell Athletics Hall of Fame in 1984. Our next guest from the class of 1977 is Todd Pike, a four-year letter winner and team captain in 1977. Todd's son, Jeff, also went to Bucknell and played on the men's golf team. Todd led the team in scoring average in 1977 at 78.0. He finished tied for seventh at the 1975 ECC championship with teammate Chick Wagner. Our next guest from the class of 1978 is Mike Schutz. He was a two-year letter winner and team captain in 1978. He won the ECAC qualifier in 1976 and the NCAA district tournament in 1978. His best individual finish at the ECC championship was third in 1978. He was an individual NCAA tournament qualifier in 1978 and earned honorable mention All-America honors. And our final guest tonight was one of the former coaches for the Bucknell men's golf program, that's Jeff Rank. Jeff was the head coach of the men's golf program from 1976 to 1981, compiling a 52 and 28 record. And Jeff and his entire family are huge supporters of the entire Bucknell athletics program. So coach, we've got a great group. I'm gonna turn it over to you and Jackson and let's have some fun. Okay, fantastic. Thanks Todd. Um, so the, I, I don't know if you gentlemen have seen the questions but I'm just gonna kind of combine a couple of them in the interest of time and getting through some uh, pretty good uh, subject matter. Um, this is for everybody, and we'll just take our turns in answering it. Um, but I'd like everyone to just kind of bring us up to speed from the time you graduated Bucknell, what you've been doing with your life, how's your family doing, and where you currently reside, and what you're doing now, either getting prepared for or in retired life. And then take us back to the beginning and just tell us how you ultimately chose and then decided to come to Bucknell and play golf at Bucknell. So, uh, Todd, you are in the the uh, the ceremonial uh Paul Lynn position of Hollywood Square. So we're going to kick it off with you, Todd, if you would uh, give us uh, your uh, your input on those two questions, and then we'll just go around the horn. Yeah, happy to do it. Thanks, Mike. And and first of all, our thanks to Todd and Mike for putting this together. It's great to uh, see everybody. Um, so my family life, I still live in Rye, New York, uh, the town I grew up in. Uh, Dawn and I have been married for 35 years. Aforementioned son, Jeff, class of 2010, and his wife, Taryn, uh, class of 2011. 
Uh, they have a, a son, James, a class of 2042. He'll be golf captain in 41 and 42. Um, and uh, he was born this year on uh, October the, the 3rd. Um, I spent my career in the office technology business with Xerox and Canon and Samsung, um, relatively recently retired, kind of uh, coaching and doing some uh, executive advisory work uh, right now. Um, and I've got a pretty extensive uh, volunteer life, um, at all re revolving around golf. Uh, most recent past president of the Metropolitan Golf Association, the MGA Foundation. Um, I've served two years on the first the board of the first team of Metropolitan New York, and I think I'm about to go on the board of the U.S. Seniors Golf Association. So there's a common theme there in my volunteer life, which uh, has brought me great pleasure and and lots of lots of good friends. Um, I, I came to Bucknell uh, because I was recruited and initially introduced to the school by Brad Tufts, um, uh, who was my coach for the first two years. Um, I did do a Southern tour the spring of my junior year with my, with my dad, and I looked at uh, Duke and Wake and Chapel Hill and UVA. And, um, you know, I, I was a good enough player in high school to be considered at a number of different schools, but I was smart enough to know uh, who Jay Haas and Curtis Strange were. And um, I was very happy to be able to drive three hours to go to Bucknell and maybe get a chance to make a spot on the team. So uh, that's a little bit of where I've been and, and what brought me to Bucknell. And I'm, I'm so glad that uh, we made the choices that we made at the time. Thank you, Todd. Uh, Chick, you're in the upper right-hand corner, so we'll jump right to you. Yeah. Um, number one, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I, you know, I have actually done very little in my life other than, you know, and, and enjoyed every, every bit of it. You know, I have great friends. I got great kids. I got a great wife now. So uh, along, along with Todd, you know, um, and this is something that, you know, I did a, a blog with, as Jeff knows, and Mike um, at Scranton Country Club a year ago. And I, cause I was president of the Pennsylvania Golf Association uh, then. So, and I've done a lot of, well, it goes back, you know, Jeff and, uh, and Brad, I think they've, you look at all of us on the screen, we've all done giving back to the game that we love, you know, and I, that, that'll get to one of the questions later on that you have for us, coach, is that one of the things I'd like to emphasize to the, the current team and all the other past, past teams is that golf's been, you know, it's like the old baseball thing. You know, golf has been very good to all of us, and especially me. I've gotten a lot more out of life than I ever deserved, and it's because of golf. And I would, you know, uh, Brad did a lot of stuff, and then Jeff really, he, he led me in the right direction and got me involved with the USGA back in, when was that, 1989, Jeff. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, did a lot of volunteer work, you know, and, and Jeff showed me the way there. And that led to a lot of other things, getting involved with the Pennsylvania Golf Association, starting the first tee of uh, Pittsburgh, first tee of Pittsburgh, and Mike Schutz, you know, came along and he helped write the bylaws to that. And, you know, it's giving back to the game that we all love and, and cherish uh, is, is something that I would encourage all the other younger, you know, younger team guys to really do and, and give back to the game and also give back to the golf team at Bucknell. And I think it all starts at the top with Jeff and Brad and in in, in what they taught us to do. Um, I got three kids. They're great kids. Chaz, my oldest one, played on the golf team at Bucknell with, with uh, Jeff Pike. Uh, had a great time there. And once again, Jerry Cum somebody at Bucknell saved his life. Um, and that was Jerry Comerford. You know, Chaz had some issues and and Jerry came and he straightened them out. And, um, you know, along the same lines, when I came to Bucknell, you know, I just came from this export, an old coal mining town in Western Pennsylvania. I had no idea what I was doing when I came to Bucknell. And if it wasn't for Mickey uh, and him taking me under his wing, you know, he was two years older than me, I would have never made it through my first year, my second year, my third year, or eventually graduated without Mickey's help. Um, he uh, he saved me and he got me through and I can't thank him enough for everything he did for me. Um, 
but yeah, my kids, Chaz, my oldest one played, my daughter, Casey, uh, went to Notre Dame. She has a, a, has a one-year-old and a baby that's due in April. So we're excited about that. And my youngest son just got married. So all's okay. good. I got a great wife. I got a new motor home I now use as I'm going to travel the country and play even more golf than I already have over the years. That's possible. Yeah. <laughs> That's possible. Well, yeah. there's, there's always goals like that. So, you know, I haven't accomplished much, but I just enjoy the game and all the friendships I've made over the years. Yeah. And uh, thanks to Jeff and, and Mickey. And one other thing, another person that was influential, which, you know, these are two older guys than me, you know, both two years older than me. But, um, Going back, you know, when I met Todd, um, I played with old, my grandfather, I never had a new set of clubs in my life. And my grand, I used my grandfather's old Spalding Executive Aluminum Shaft at Grandfather Clubs. And, um, you know, I used those my freshman year and then my sophomore year I met, met Todd and he got a new set of pings, I'll never forget. And he had an old set of Nicole 11s from uh, Scotland. And he says, try these. And I bought them from him for $95. And those, that was the, you know, the best clubs I ever had in my life. He still plays them. Yeah. Yes, he does. How about, how about the Gidgey? How about the friends Gidgey? Got par with him one time. He, how about the Gidgey? Yeah, but those the clubs were so well. Okay. And then he, he uh, then I bought his old Tony Penna driver from him <laughs> as well. And, you know, all of you guys on the screen, have been big influences in my life. Um, and I can't thank you all enough. So that's great. Sorry, I, sorry I rambled enough, but I had I, I wanted to make sure I thanked all of you guys. That's okay. Mickey, you're next. Oh geez. Well, thank you all. And it, it's so great seeing seeing you all. Uh, Bucknell was my big break and um, I was a eleventh grader uh, and playing in the PIAA District 10 championships. And I end up shooting 73 or something like getting it up and down from everywhere and nowhere. And um, I, uh, I, I, I have to play off Dennis Adiger, who was the uh, reigning Pennsylvania uh, schoolboy champion to get a spot in the state tournament. So, um, <clears throat> I was, I was dressed totally in orange. You guys know how I dress. I was dressed totally in orange. And uh, I probably weighed 120 pounds at that point. <laughs> Satisher was, he was like the god of golf in, in Western Pennsylvania. Um, I, after, after a long time, a very distinguished professional. And so um, anyway, um, we have to play off and uh, the guy, he's standing on the tee, he's got his arms crossed, and he says, where's the little guy in the orange? <laughs> and so, anyway, he gets, he gets the tee, and he snap hooks it into the, in, into the trees on the left. And I knock it down 190. I knock it down to the front of the green. I make a par, and I beat him. <laughs> you know, so, so Brad Toff saw that. And that was my recruitment into Bucknell. So 35 years later, I go into his pro shop down in Baltimore. And you guys have been down there. And he's, he's standing there as if, as if, you know, he was the same age and I was the same age. And I go up to him and I smiled to him and I said, I'm the little guy in the orange. And he, he knew, we all remember these things. He knew exactly what we were talking about. So Bucknell gave me the, uh, as Chick's, Chick talks about it, Bucknell gave me the vision of a bigger world. Um, and, uh, you know, I love golf. I've, I've done consulting work with the United States Golf Association and Rand Jarris, um, he's, a, he, he's a wonderful man at the USGA and um, he, he may or may not be the next, next uh, executive director, uh, but, he sure deserves to be. Jeff might disagree. Uh, but um, anyway, um, uh, golf has been, it, it's been, it's my lifeblood. And uh, I'll, I'll play tomorrow. And uh, 
I, I see all of you guys and I just want to thank you for your friendship. Michael. I should see your neck. Thank you. Thanks for doing this. I, I really appreciate it. It's so great to see these guys who I really care about and to meet uh, to meet all of you. I, um, my wife and I of 39 years, Tina, uh, and I have three children and six grandchildren under six. We split our time now between Swickley, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Pittsburgh, and uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, which is where I am right now. And um, I practiced law for a period of time after leaving Bucknell, went to University of Pittsburgh Law School and then practiced law. And then my two brothers and I got into the transportation business and started several entrepreneurial transportation uh, ventures that we uh, sold over the years. And so I'm pretty much retired now. Uh, I came to Bucknell a little bit different uh, way than most everyone. I grew up in Grove City, Pennsylvania, and a dear friend of all of ours, a gentleman named Bruce Firm, uh, and I grew up together playing a ton of golf, played every day when we were kids, played on the same high school team. I went to Denison University. Really, Bucknell wasn't on my radar screen. I really didn't think I could get into Bucknell uh, in any event and uh, ended up at Denison, played Division Three golf there and played really well my freshman year. But I wasn't happy because the program just wasn't, we didn't have a motivating coach and it wasn't really something that people were going to drive as much as I had hoped they would drive it. So I reached out to Bruce, who was at Bucknell, and I grew up playing with Chick a fair amount in West Penn golf uh, events. And so I talked to Chick and uh, long story short, they said, yeah, come on to, to Bucknell. So I called Brad Tufts. And I think that was Brad's last year because I, I don't think I, I know I never played for Brad. And I think that Jeff might have replaced Jeff, uh, Brad right then. So I, I, they said, come on to Bucknell. They facilitated, and I'd done well enough academically to get in at that point. And um, so I went and I had to register. Back in those days, I had to make that sacrifice and, uh, and sat out for a year in order to be able to play two years at Bucknell, but it was really worth it. Um, uh, Jeff was an amazing coach. I could spend the whole session just talking about what a wonderfully encouraging and motivating uh, person he was. Um, and uh, how influential he was in my life. And uh, I was fortunate to, uh, to do well at, at Bucknell and more importantly, to make truly lifelong friendships. My best friends are in golf and my best friends in golf really truly are the uh, fellas on this call and, and a few others. And particularly Chick, who uh, Chick and I are both members at Oakmont. Uh, I think we've both been there about 42 years, which is amazing. And Chick's got his name up on the club championship board many times. Uh, I hadn't been able to achieve that, but there's always next year. <laughs> and, uh, and you so, hadn't broken your arm three years keep, ago. Keep, keep the fairways firm. But I want to, that's right. But I want to thank you again for inviting me to participate in this. And, uh, and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it, so thank you. Thanks, Michael. Dan, take it away, sir. I want to say hi to Chick and Mickey. It's nice. I see Chick's. I I watch some of your stuff when you uh, do your videos on Oakmont for the Open and the PGA, so I enjoy that. I'll take the second question first. Uh, it was an easy choice to come to Bucknell because Coach Tuff's the only one that reached out to me. Uh, I. I was going to go to Bonaventure, say Bonaventure is hometown. I could have gone there for pretty much free and living at home. But uh, Bucknell was able to, they matched uh, my New York State scholarship. So with a, in a job in the cafeteria, it made it, made it worthwhile. And I truly loved every minute of it. Um, when I left Bucknell, I, I didn't have a job when I left Bucknell. And I had an opportunity in my old high school. Uh, I taught a half a year um, in chemistry. They just, it was a an emergency situation it was supposed to be a week or two and it lasted for a half a year. I liked it. So I went back and got certified and uh, to teach and I'm a math major. And so I taught 34 years in Olean uh, school, which is right next door to the town I grew up in, uh, taught math for 34 years. I retired, uh, well, quite a few years ago now. As a matter of fact, it was right about the last time I saw Mickey and Chick uh, when we were at Brad's birthday party 
uh, that was the year I retired. But then a uh, superintendent asked me to do a favor. I came back as a, it was supposed to be short term again. I'm the claims auditor for the Olean City School District. One year turned into about five and then she retired and I was gonna retire and the new superintendent came in. I knew him and he said, well, you can't leave. So, so I'm still there. It's a, just a one day a week job. I have to just audit every claim before bills can get paid. You know, it's, just, it's an easy job as long as everybody's doing their, their work and they are. But the funny thing about it, I just looking at my last pay, you know, I, like I said, I only work one day a week. I'm going to be about $200 less what I make this year than I made my whole first year of teaching. There you go. <laughs> so Dan, Dan what, what club do you play at in, in Olean? It's called Bartlett Country Club. So I met a guy uh, and, and it had to do with uh, the, the, the St. Bonaventure and you almost, okay. you almost went there. And I said, do you, do you know Dan? And, and he said, yeah. I play him in the club championship every year and he beats me every year. <laughs> <laughs> Who is he? Remember the guy? No, no? But, but it was. Well, that that it, would have been it, a while it, ago, though. It was perfect. No, it was perfectly plausible. It's perfect. No, it, it would have been a while ago, though. That that hasn't happened in, in quite some time. But there was a stretch there where he's probably true. Uh, <laughs> well, it was. I remember uh, Tom Watson played at the course uh, one time. He came and, did a, and he was walking through. I got invited to, to be at the luncheon they had with him before he went out to play, but he was walking through the grill room and he looked up at the board, kind of like when I looked at the board and uh, I got to play Oakland a few, well, quite a while ago, but saw a chick's name up there, but he's walking through and he just, he's glancing at the board and he gets in and he pulls me aside. And he goes, boy, you have a pretty easy time of it here, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> So I, taught, so, uh, I have uh, I have a son that's 34. He went to Syracuse. Uh, he now works for Price Waterhouse Cooper, uh, and he lives just south of Dallas. He's got a five-year-old and a one-year-old, which drives me crazy. I am I can't get to see them. I saw the, the one-year-old when he was two months old, and now he's you know 14 months old. So that's been tough. And uh, my daughter, I have, she's 31, and she lives in Pittsburgh. Um, she, she started, a, a, I don't know, about eight years ago, a nonprofit pit bull rescue uh, called Biggie's Bullies. And she's doing a lot of work in that. And, and, and she's part owner in, a, uh, they have two pet stores, um, Pedagogy is called, one in Shadyside and one in Greensburg. Awesome. Uh, she's not married. She's got a... Uh, pretty steady boyfriend but no children we just I have so I have two grandchildren and a lot of grand pit bulls <laughs> there you go there you go all right coach rank sir if you could uh, kind of dovetail off of what everybody said and just kind of take us back to how you got involved initially with the Bucknell golf team and that relationship with Brad and how that all transpired well um I grew up in Lewisburg and uh we had a great high school golf program here and uh Randy Hoffman, who was uh, lived right up the street from me and played on the golf team with me, he was a great player. He went to the University of Maryland and later coached the Maryland golf team, was Fred Funk's coach. Um, but we used to play at the Bucknell Golf Club all the time, and we played with Bucknell students and some Bucknell team members. And, uh, of course, I knew Brad. In fact, I, I caddied for Brad uh, for a couple of his first club championships even. And... Uh, but I thought when it was time for me to uh, decide where I was going to go to school, I thought it was probably a good idea for me to get out of Lewisburg for a while. So uh, I uh, was playing in a national championship. I, was, I qualified uh, for the National Youth Insurance Classic, and uh, we played out in uh, Outer Creek Country Club in, in uh, Indiana. And on the way back, we visited several schools in Ohio, and I, I met uh, Dick Gordon, who's now a Hall of Fame coach. He's, he's uh, the late Dick Gordon. He passed away two years ago at the age of 92. But um, he started recruiting me, and I, I went to Ohio Wesleyan, and that was when um, there was only Division One and Division Two. I graduated in 74. Uh, I was captain of the golf team there. We won uh, four Ohio Conference Championships, and I played in two NCAA Championships, uh, Division Two, And... Um, when I graduated, I came back to, to uh, 
at the Lewisburg and I was really looking for a job at it. I was a journalism major, but I, I also wanted to play golf. And uh, Pete, my friend, Pete Pedrick, who was a friend of our families, was the uh, vice president of university relations, um, said, you know, I need a guy, a part-time person to uh, be like the acting director of alumni relations because I lost my act my director of alumni relations, she was leaving and they needed somebody with your skill set, you know, writing and speaking and stuff like that. So I, you know, I, I went to work for him. And while I was in the, my first year in the alumni office and Mickey was also working in the university relations at the time, Brad uh, decided to give up the coaching job in order to take a promotion within the department of public relations. Uh, and uh, so I went down to Bob Latour the athletic director at the time. And I said, you know, if you're looking for a golf coach, uh, I'd, I'd be interested in doing that. And, uh, and he said, really? And I said, yeah, I, and I, I graduated uh, from Ohio Wesleyan a semester late because I took a semester off in my junior year to go to Florida and work on my golf game. So my, I had one semester uh, when I was no longer eligible. So I served as the assistant golf coach at Ohio Wesleyan with uh, under Dick Gordon, who was a great mentor. And, and Bob Latour happened to be an Ohio Wesleyan alumnus. Um, and he said, and I think he realized he could get me really cheap, which he did. Because um, I was, you know, it was a part-time job. I was full-time uh, salaried employee of the university relations staff. And, and Mickey can tell you how much incredible excess income we had at that job. <laughs> and uh, and uh, my, sal my salary to coach the golf team was uh, twelve hundred dollars, and uh, and I did get a free membership to the golf course, um, and our budget was uh, twenty eight hundred dollars. Uh, so we did not eat anywhere nearly as well as Coach Cotner's team did, and or as Benny's team does, I'm sure. <laughs> but that's you know, I, so I ended up uh, you know I thought maybe I'd do it for a year or two, and. Uh, I ended up doing it for six. Uh, the last couple, I, w I got into the business world. I've spent, I just retired uh, actually four years ago now uh, after 36 years with Merrill Lynch. And, uh, you know, I tried coaching for a couple of years uh, while I was also, before I went with Merrill, I was in the business world and uh, it just wasn't uh, doing either my job or the team justice. So I gave it up in, in 81. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a uh, kind of like a subway alumnus of Bucknell. My dad went there. My whole childhood, we spent every weekend going to every Bucknell sporting event you can imagine, whether it was a swim meet or a football game or a basketball basketball games. I've been going to basketball games at Bucknell since uh, the the mid to late 1950s. So um, you know, I, I've out of this whole crazy six years where I was the uh, golf coach and I was all of uh, a couple of years older than these guys. Um, I've gotten some uh, lifelong friendships uh, as, as anybody who's played golf knows that you meet the, the best class of people on the golf course. And um, between uh, Mike and Todd and Chick and Mickey, uh, you know, I've got some lifelong friendships that, you know, really go beyond my own team experience at Ohio Wesley. And I've got several former teammates that, I'm still fairly close with, but nothing compares to, to these guys. Uh, we just spent a, a couple of days in the fall up at Toft Trees together, Mickey and Chick and Mike and I, and um, we hope to do stuff like that uh, every year. And so it's been a great, great experience and great, uh, great relationships with these guys. You can't believe it's been almost 50 years since. Okay. We did that. Amazing. So I'll shift gears here now and uh, turn it over to Jackson. He's got a uh, couple of questions that he's going to just ask the audience and We'll go in reverse order, um, and uh, Coach Rank, if you'd kick it, kick off the answering uh, first, and we'll just go back the way we came. And uh, Jackson, you've got the uh, mic, sir. Uh, yeah, basically, uh, I just want to ask all of you, uh, what advice would you give to me, a current team member, uh, I'm a sophomore, uh, or any of the other team members, about not only the college golf experience, but also like networking and finding a job like right after Bucknell? Well, I would tell you that uh, you're in no better position to network and to meet great people than you are on the golf team and playing golf throughout your career. I mean, it, it, every, 
virtually every relationship I have in my life, uh, with very few exceptions, and certainly in the business world, it, it all started on the golf course. So if you, uh, if you have a decent game, and probably more importantly, if you behave yourself appropriately with the right ty type of demeanor and, and uh, I think respect the traditions and the, uh, the etiquette of the game, uh, networking will find you. Uh, in my opinion. Uh, so, you know, I, I just keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, when you get a chance to talk to an, an older person, uh, I know we're in the age where we don't do that very much. We use these things and text message, you know, when we go out to dinner, we sit there and do that. But, you know, I, I think there's nothing, nothing more impressive to me than to have a, uh, a younger person approach me and just start talking to me about asking me about my life and, and then asking me to share some, some thoughts with them about theirs. So I think it's that simple. Yeah, thank you. Dan, can you dovetail onto that? Yeah, well, uh, the first thing I would say is I would work really hard on time management. That was one thing that I had a lot of trouble with trying to, you know, get everything done and stay up. You know, I was always behind. Uh, but the other thing I'd say, enjoy it enjoy what's going on because it's going to go really really fast you know when I when my son when he would play go out for golf he played golf he played basketball he played all the sports but I'd always tell him you know whatever happens today have fun enjoy the experience you know you're going to win you're going to lose but but really enjoy it but uh networking I I don't have any experience with that myself but my, my son at Syracuse you know when he went I told him Try to get to know your professors really, really well uh, and take any opportunity you can. You know, if, if the department's offering any of these meet and greets with former, you know, uh, uh, alumni that would come in, you know, he was interested and in, he was a double major accounting and uh, um, finance. And so he had some opportunities to meet, you know, some former uh, alumni working at the big five accounting firms. But the freshman year is probably the big one. He had the opportunity to meet a partner in PwC. And the guy talked to him and said, if you ever need any help, you know, don't hesitate. And so when he was going for his um, uh, an internship for, after his junior year, I said, you know, the guy told you. And I said, just just write to him, tell him, just, just letting you know what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm applying for the internship and I just wanted you to know if he could help. I mean, he got the internship and he and they offered him a job right at, at the end of his junior year. So he had a job going into his senior year and he decided, he says, I don't know, county might be dull. He says, but they have an opening in forensic accounting. And I said, well, you know the guy. I said, write him a letter and tell him, hey, I, you know, I just want you to know I accepted a job with PwC and, and now I'm applying for a position in forensic accounting. He got it. Now, whether that, that partner did anything or not, I don't know, but I kind of think he probably did. So I would say take advantage of any of those kind of opportunities that you can get, you know, because I know they do. I, I know when I was at Bucknell, they brought in like math people that speak for, you know, in an afternoon, they have an hour, you know, meet and greet. And, Anything like that that relates to your field, I would say take advantage of it. Thank you. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Michael. Uh, yes. The, the, with regard to the golf experience, I would echo what Dan said. I'd really savor the moments because uh, they're wonderful times. And, uh, and you know what I, what I mean by that. As far as networking, a couple of things. I would... Um, Golfers are, are generally successful. Most of the golfers I know because they have to manage their time, they have to manage themselves and, it, and it's, a, it's a great field. So you'll meet a lot of good people. I would ask for what I want. A lot of people beat around the bush in life and they, they just don't ask for the things that, that they want. So I would, I would ask for the things I want respectfully. I would talk with people, invite them to lunch or dinner It might say, or, or breakfast. It might seem strange, but you could call a CEO who you met on the golf course and say, could I please take you to breakfast? I'd like to talk with you. And, and you'd be surprised that they will take you up on that opportunity and then ask them for their success strategies. It doesn't have to be, can I have a job and make it clear it's, you're not asking for a job. It's tell me how you got to be where you are. 
And I think that they would really be uh, willing to share because people like to help other people, particularly young people. And uh, then be, don't be afraid to keep them involved going on. You know, dear Mr. Jones, thank you so much for your time. You know, I, I got a job, you know, PwC and, and I'm really excited. And again, thank you for your help. And if you build a network of those folks through your life, you'd be shocked at how that will double back to help you on in the future. And I guess the last thing is I'm old fashioned, but I really like handwritten notes. I really like handwritten letters. Emails are just not our style, I think the guys on this call. So I think everybody appreciates that it takes the time to write a handwritten note on very classy stationery that really represents who you are. So that would be my advice. Yeah, thank you very much. Mickey. Well, again, Jackson, thank you for, for enduring this call. <laughs> uh, and thank you for your question. Uh, I agree with what Dan and Jeff and Mike have said so far. Um, you know, if you can hit a golf ball 270 yards, uh, which is probably what you can do, uh, you have an advantage. And uh, so if you're playing with someone in the middle management or upper, upper middle management of, uh, of uh, uh, Merrill Lynch or of uh, some other, other company, um, uh, they're, they're, going to, uh, they're going to take interest in that. And as Jeff said, if you comport yourself well, uh, you'll do well. Uh, it, it just, um, it, it's like magic. They wish that they could do what you can do. Uh, and, you know, and talk a little bit. Uh, be, uh, be conversant. Um, that will work well for you. Thank you. Chick. Yeah. Um, Jackson, good luck, buddy. Um, I've got a couple of notes, but I, one of the things, you know, Mike and I agree on wholeheartedly is handwritten notes. And um, I'll get to the rest of that message in a second. But Jackson, do you have any idea where you want to go after you graduate? If you, if you don't have anything locked in, do you have any idea where you want to go? Are you talking like, are you talking like company wise or like geographically? Geographically. Um, I would have no issue working like a, in like a New York City environment or even like Chicago, coming back to Chicago. Okay. So here, here's my, my thought. When you go to New York, Chicago, Pittsburgh, wherever it may be, number one, you're a good golfer, a very good golfer, like Mickey was saying. You can do things that on a golf course better than 99% of the people can. Number one, I would, and, and Todd, Todd's a good example, and he can, he can definitely direct you in, you know, in the New York City area. But a lot of golf courses, the golf clubs aren't, other than this year, aren't doing very well financially. Okay. I would definitely explore the idea most most country clubs have junior golf program memberships. I would in highly encourage you, wherever you go geographically, to try and join the best number one golf course in that area. Correct. Correct. Todd, Todd's a member of Pine Valley. Mike and I are here at Oakmont. The people we get a chance to meet are off the charts. So a lot of these places have junior membership for kids, young people. Try and join the best course you can. If you're in Cincinnati, go to Camargo. If you know, wherever it might be. That's number one. Number two, if you can't get in there, get into the next best course, but maybe even then go over and caddy at the best course that there is in that area. You will network, you will meet people that are out of sight. Um, one other thing, Coach um, and Todd, you know who I would have really liked to have had on this on this conference call would, you know, and could really have helped Jackson in, in this, you know, situation is Frank Brown, who was a you know teammate of ours. Extremely, extremely, extremely successful. And um, and, and and another great friend of all of ours. So he, he could have really helped out in this, this conversation. 
So the handwritten notes, join the best club you can. And I'll give you a chance, an example, you know, my, um, a number of years ago, I don't know, Jeff, I can't remember when it was, it was a 10 or 12 years ago. Um, I got, you know, I get invited to play in a birthday party here at Oakmont, by, you know, with Stan Druckenmiller. And lo and behold, I get paired with Ken Langone, you know, from Home Depot, you know, the man of Bucknell, you know, gifts. And we had a great time together. And I send him handwritten notes occasionally. I call him on his birthday in September in his office and tell his secretary, just tell him I called and wished him a happy birthday. I don't need to talk to him, just wish him a... Nobody else does that. Call people. When you find out somebody's birthday, okay, put it in your calendar, put it in your contacts, and you know what? Call or write the guy, a, you know, happy birthday. Yep. That's something nobody else does, like Mike said. Nobody writes handwritten notes. Nobody wishes anybody else a happy birthday. You know, Jeff knows that from you know, his Merrill Lynch days. You know, he always sends out happy birthday, you know, notes. He did, he did that for 40 years with Merrill Lynch. So, but I would write Ken Langone, a <laughs> <my> handwritten note. <laughs> Unbelievable. As I would get a handwritten note back from Ken Langone. Every time. Every time. I the sent man, it. right? I sent and it. he's writing me a handwritten note. I don't deserve that. I sent so, him a birthday card this year and he wrote a, a note, thank you note back to me for sending him a birthday card. Exactly. And, and Jackson, today in the mail, I got a Christmas card from Mike Schutz. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's those little this things. Important. This is important stuff. It's, it, it's more important. I don't know. I'm stepping out of bounds here, but it's more important than your studies. You know, it's the people you meet, and also you have to look at the look at how the four four or five of us are still great friends. Yes. You have to stay in close contact with all of your existing teammates, the kid the kids that are three years older than you. And the kids that are three years younger than you, you got a whole network of, of, of kids, friends, that you should do the best job you can of staying in touch with them. And then, and and Coach Vinny, I would encourage you to, we, all of us, we have to do a better job of getting all the alumni back to Lewisburg on a more regular basis. Everybody, I mean, these things, these teleconferences, the Zoom is, is really nice. But when we were all back and we, we played golf last year with George Benson, you yep. know, last year and all the guys, that, that's special times. We're, we're old. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta get your crew and make sure they're loyal to Bucknell the same way. 100%. Last, uh, last year uh, in spring break 2019, the whole team had lunch with Mike Viscucci and Ken Langone. And uh, Ken was on one end and Mike was on the other. And all they did was argue about who got into more trouble at Buck now. And I told the guys afterwards, I'm like, you have no idea how special that lunch was. You'll probably never get to do that again the rest of your life. And they all wrote and I made them, I made them do it. I made them write handwritten notes to Ken and Mike and, and Ken wrote a handwritten note back to every single one of the guys on the team. So Hopefully they still have it. Um, and sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it, but no, no, Todd... no. That, that, that's great. Congratulations. Good job. And and Langone is the best. I mean, he he, is. I had him out here a couple times and he asked me if I knew this guy here locally that was his roommate at Sigma Chi. And I said, yeah, I know him real well. He lives right across the street here. He goes, you know, him. I said, yeah, I'll go call him right now. And he came over to the club and they sat down and they talked like, little kids <laughs> yeah. sorry Jackson um, hard to add to all of that other than to reinforce the next two and a half years of your life are among the best you're ever going to have you know enjoy the next two and a half years hit it in the middle of the fairway keep it below the hole and uh, just have you know really have a good time and and, and enjoy it uh, as for your career uh, getting started all of the advice you've gotten is great advice. The only thing I would add is don't be shy to reach out to 
your Bucknell Golf alum uh, in those areas. And I'm thinking of, for instance, um, all of us, one of us hooking you up with Charlie Waddell in the Chicago area. I mean, Charlie's just, first of all, he's just a tremendous young man, a very accomplished player. You know, he's played in multiple U.S. amateurs and U.S. mid-ams now. Um, you know, he went back, got his MBA. He's got a terrific career started. He could give you some great advice. And if, Jackson, you decide to come to New York, give me a call and I'll just introduce you to some folks. And when you plant yourself in New York or Chicago, you know, volunteering at places like the Metropolitan Golf Association or the Western Golf Association is a great way to meet new people. Right. And uh, it's a great way to, to play, to make friends, to get back to the game, but also to, you know, to meet new individuals. So th those are really the only things I can uh, add with my best wishes for your success. Uh, thank you for the advice. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if I'm if I land up in New York, I will definitely give you a call. You got it. My Already networking. OK, gents, this is going to be the final uh, round of uh, of uh, questions. And we're going to combine again. We're going to combine two of them. What was your most memorable experience at Bucknell and which teammate did you admire most throughout your career here at Bucknell or even after after Bucknell? If you could combine those two and. Uh, um, Todd, again, we'll just go in reverse order and start with you. Sure. A lot of great memories. Uh, the aforementioned 66 that Chick uh, shot at, uh, at the Juniana uh, dual matches. Now, if you can imagine, this dates us. We used to play dual matches, um, and the number one and two players played again with the number one and two players from um, at that day. That day, it was against Juniata, and it was uh, the Friday afternoon of um, house party weekend at Teak. And um, yeah, and we knew the, the course record was 67. And when Chick shot 66, I, I'm busy trying to get out of his way shooting 71. And our picture in plaid pants uh, are, still hangs at the Bucknell Golf Club because it will forever stand as the best five out of seven score I ever posted because you'll never go back to that format again. So we will uh, we will have earned that, uh, you know, perpet in perpetuate. So uh, that was a great um, um memory. In terms of the person I um, kind of admired the most, uh, Chick was without a doubt the best player. But when I arrived at Bucknell, Mickey Sinkus was the captain of the golf team. He was president of the fraternity I wanted to join. And he was dating some long-legged brunette. Yeah. I don't, was, so it, at the end of the day, Mickey wins. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. I don't you, remember the brunette. You are my hero. <laughs> Chick, you're next. All right. Thanks. Well, what Todd forgets to tell you about my 66 is that I was one under on the front nine, and I had to hit it out of the water on number nine because I tried to go for it in two because Todd turned the front nine at three under. So he was on – He was. He, I was just chasing him all day. And – I, I think I birdied three of the last five holes then to shoot that. But Todd was ahead of me all day. So I was I was chasing. I was chasing him all day. So he, he, he always fails to tell the, the Paul Harvey the rest the of the rest story. of the story. Yeah, you go. So uh, but uh, you know, Mickey and Danny and Davey's not here and um, we we I was fortunate my freshman year. To, uh, to get invited to go on the, the trip to Scotland uh, in the spring of 73. And I was just a, a freshman then. And then, you know, we just had, you know, I got, I got the pictures still here of in front of the, uh, the RNA and all of us with, with our hair blowing wild on the, on the Swillican Bridge right up, right up here. Uh, but that was, you know, that was a trip of a lifetime. And uh, and Mr. Cooley paid, you know, paid for it because there were, what was it Mickey? Were there four, four seniors, you, Mike Helfrick, and me, right? Right. Something like that. Right. So well, that, um, that's going to be my story too. Nah, I know. I, I knew. I was. That's why I'm glad I got ahead of you. <laughs> so, uh, but that was that was a great time, and uh, you know, and you know, I've been back to fortunate enough to go back to Scotland a number of times. And, and play both those courses. I played in the British Amateur at Carnoustie and the stories of Mickey on 17 
at Carnoustie, you know, hitting it across the burn, Danny, remember that? And then his, then his second shot. And there were only two people that hit it across the burn on, at the number first hall at St. Andrews. And that was Mickey and Jerry Pate. They were the only one in 300, what, 360 yard hall. And I crushed the drive and killed a five iron to lay up short of the burn. And Mickey- so St. Andrews? It's St. Andrews. And Mickey, Mickey, he, he and Jerry Pate were the only two that ever, to get across the, across the creek or the burn on number one that day in, in the wind. Wow. So wow. anyhow, I'll never forget that. Mickey, your turn, buddy. So continuing on that. Um, <laughs> so we, we went to Scotland. It was blowing at, it was, it was blowing at 40, gusting at 60 in 1973. And Jerry Pate won the tournament. He was the reigning U.S. Amateur champion, uh, and uh, he won by 16 shots, I think. Check you could you could check me on that. Yeah. And uh, but the night before, we all went out to this big dance hall, and because Pate was the uh, reigning U.S. Amateur champion, uh, they gave him the Scottish flag, and he paraded it around this this crowd of 2,000 people. And he was drunk as a skunk. It, it, it was amazing. So anyway, as Chick said, we played the, the, the next round together and everything like that. So they, they flew us over on a, on a 747 and we're, we're flying back and um, I'm sitting in a, a middle seat and I'm reading a textbook. And Jerry Pate comes up to me and he says, Mick, what are you doing? And I, I, I tried to explain to him that we had to uh, have our finals, our, 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 our midterms the week after, because we, the professors gave us the, uh, the privilege of, uh, of uh, uh, going, going to the tournament, which may not happen right now, but that's another story. So I said, to, so he, he goes into dead silence. And he says to me, uh, I, I said to him, Jerry, what are you studying at the University of Alabama? Oh. And he says to me, shit, Mick, I ain't never registered. <laughs> 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 so so there, there's, there's a lot of variations here in college golf, but you know, Bucknell golf is, pr it's pretty amazing. Thanks guys. Yep. Michael. Yeah, well, I'm tempted to say that one of my favorite memories is uh, uh, of Jeff Rank, Coach Rank getting lost on the way to every tournament. <laughs> <laughs> he was the driver and it was pre-GPS day. They didn't even have the kind of GPS you could buy. And we got lost every to and from every tournament we went to. <laughs> but that's, that doesn't qualify. I think one of the tournaments you mentioned that I did well and I won it was at Bucknell. And I remember I went out, started on the back nine, <clears throat> went out to the practice range, and I shank maybe 50 shots. I shank <laughs> absolutely every shot that I hit. And I just kept switching clubs, trying to find one that I wouldn't shank. And it, I wasn't successful. Went over to the 10th tee, hit it on the, on the green on the par three, and something kind of clicked. And you guys won't believe this, but it's never happened before, and it has never happened since. I think I hit every fairway and every green and shot a great round on a very difficult course that day, ended up winning the tournament. So that just tells you how crazy uh, a game golf is. Uh, the people that I admire, I didn't have a place to live when I transferred there from Denison. And uh, Bruce and Chick and Todd were living together and they were kind enough to take me in. And it was amazing to develop those friendships. Even when I had that red shirt year, I admire Todd so much for his perfect swing. It is a perfect golf swing. It was such a pleasure to reconnect with Todd this fall at Oakmont after many, many years yeah. of not even seeing each other. Shame on both of us, uh, but Chick pulled us together. And you know what? Todd's swing is identical. Um, and I, everybody admires Chick, not only for his friendliness and his, you know, just a man's man, but it's amazing golf game. 
But the guy who I think even tops that, and I think everybody would agree with me, was our teammate Frank Brown, because Frank, Jeff always made the point, Frank didn't have the natural skills. He always bumped between fifth man and sixth man. There were many times when he didn't get to go on a trip because he uh, didn't qualify, but he never gave up. He worked hard. He showed up at every practice and he uh, had just such drive and determination and love of the game and such a gentleman. And Coach Rank always pointed that out. What, a, what an example uh, that uh, Brownie was. And guess what? He was amazingly successful in his career. I would venture to say more successful than any of us. Internationally recognized business person and still a wonderful human being. So that's a lengthy answer to that question. Thanks. Good, good, good point, Michael. Thank you. Dan, off to you, sir. Well, you have to understand, before I came to Bucknell, I had never been out of uh, Western New York or <laughs> maybe Northwestern Pennsylvania, except one time I did go to um, Long Island for a state high school championship. But other than that, so coming to Bucknell is probably as far away as I've been from home. So I loved every road trip that we took. Uh, and then the spring trips, uh, I, we couldn't play as freshmen, but the spring trips were, were great. We went to Duke and we played uh, what, the Red Fox Invitational. We got snowed out, but Lanny Watkins was the defending champion there. Then we went the junior year, they, we went to Miami and the University of Florida was there and their top three players were Andy Bean, Andy North and Gary Cook. So it was neat playing with that. And then of course, Scotland uh, and you know, Mickey, to pick up on that, we didn't, we weren't sitting together as a team on that flight back. And I got a seat next to Jerry Pate. And like, like you said, I pulled out a book and he goes, what are you doing? And he goes, uh, <laughs> I said, well, and I explained to him, you know, that we had, we were in actually in school that week. We, we, you know, we missed spring break, but, and he goes, you actually have to go to class. <laughs> and that's someone else. He says, you, we're going to be pretty rowdy. You might want to switch seats. Well, he got another teammate to come back and switch with me, but he goes to the teammate. He goes, he says, you go, he says, how often you go to class? This guy's got to go to class when he gets back. And he said, um, now mind you, this was right around the, the middle of March, right? Right, right. Yeah. Right. He goes, I think I've been, I don't know about this month. But he says, I was, I went twice last month. <laughs> So, and Coach, I don't know if you can see this. This was, that's the picture we had after we won the Middle Atlantic Conference Championship in 73. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, by looking at that and looking at the pictures of your team, it looks to me like Chick is the only one tall enough to play on your team. Yeah, <laughs> right? well, we're a bunch of midgets there. <laughs> and uh, anyway, this guy, that's, I'm in the blue sweater. And the guy next to me, Greg Mortis, they, we call him Rigger. And uh, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to use the word admired the most, but he inspired me the most. When we played, he was always, it didn't matter what he was shooting, you see him walk and he'd be chugging down the fairway, you know, he's head, and it's just like, and he always said the right thing, could say the right thing to me to get me. Uh, to get me back out of a funk if I was in one or, but he just knew, I, I always thought if, if I ever was good enough to play where I had to have a, a caddy, <laughs> he'd be the guy I would want. He had great stories. He could keep you loose, but he could get you psyched up. And I mean, he just was, he would have been the perfect guy, I think, to have on your bag to, to spend that much time with. Oh, he's, a, he's such a great man. I talked I talk to him monthly. So I, I but probably the, the Middle Atlantic Conference, as much as Scotland I like, the Middle Atlantic Conference Championship, I think probably was my best because how happy Coach Tufts was when I, I was in the last group when I came off. And I know he told me going out, he says, just, just beat the guy you're with, beat that guy. And I didn't. And I come off and he goes, how'd you do? And I said, I lost. Uh, he says, how much? I said, one. And he got a big smile. He says, that's good <laughs> enough. <laughs> and he was just so happy. Coach Rank, if you could do the same question and uh, wrap this up for us and just give us, you literally probably played more rounds on, on uh, Bucknell Golf Course than any human still alive right now. So why don't you tell us what your greatest experience is and uh, tell us who you look up to. 
Well, I, you know, I, I'm, it's hard to put a nail down the greatest experience with during coaching. It all kind of blurs together. I, I mean, some of the, we had a lot of funny, funny things happen. One, one was uh, uh, on our way up to Oak Hill. Um, there was a roadside rest there right off of uh, the interstate. I can't remember what the interstate number is 90 or something, I think. And uh, we're outside of Rochester, probably an hour away. And we pull off at this roadside rest, which is overlooking this, this, there's some down the, down this big hill. There's a, there's a little campground down there and it's, you know, hundreds of hundreds of yards away. And the guys decided they wanted to hit some, hit some balls off of the, uh, off the macadam. I've still got pictures. I got sparks flying guys hitting irons off of the, off of the pavement. And Jeff Buley, who was with us at the time, and Jeff was a pretty long hitter. One of the guys bet him that he couldn't hit this one tent that was down there. And he teed up his driver and it went soaring down the hill and it hit right on top of the tent and everybody <laughs> scrambled into the van and we got the hell out of there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, really the reason we stopped at the roadside rest was probably to make a U-turn because I was lost again. Uh, I wish we'd have had, uh, wish we'd have had uh, GPS uh, at that time, but we didn't. But as far as, uh, you know, my admiration, uh, you know, Mike Schutz is one of the guys that came to me and said, you know, Mike, Mike, when he transferred in, you know, he, he wasn't really a renowned player, but uh, he came to my office and he sat down and he said, what's possible here? And, uh, and we talked about some setting some goals and what he could possibly achieve. And, um, you know, Dan, he put his, put his head down and went to it and worked really hard. And, uh, made it to the NCAAs in Eugene, Oregon, his senior year, and went out with his, his, his mother and dad, uh, took Deb and I out there with them, by way of San Francisco first. And, uh, you know, because the university was not going to pay to send me along. They didn't need a golf coach to go to the NCAAs. We needed a wrestling coach to go to the NCAAs, and we needed a swimming coach to go to the NCAAs, but we didn't need a golf coach to go to the NCAAs. And Mike's <laughs> father said to, Wendell Smith, who was the provost at that time, who made that decision, he said, that's BS. And he says, I'm going to pay to take Jeff and Debbie. And that's what we did. But Mike accomplished great things in his two years at Bucknell. Uh, and one of the things we didn't mention, you know, he was All-American honorable mention. And if you look at the All-American plaque, his name is listed right above Fred Couples because it's in <laughs> alphabetical order. Yep. And... Uh, so that, that was one of the, and the other one, you know, certainly Brownie, you know, we, you already mentioned Frank Brown, uh, but you know, Brownie was just one of those guys that, uh, you know, he worked his tail off for you and he really wanted to be part of the team. And I'd never forget going to him his senior year when we were trying to pick a fifth man to go up to army to play in the Eastern championship. And I just wasn't sure who that was going to be. And I went to, went up to the teak house and grabbed, took Brownie to his room and said, you know, I think, I think I'm going to take you Brownie because you're not going to quit on me. And that, that I've never seen anybody's face light up in my life like Frank's did that day. And, and uh, I think it was a really defining moment of his, of his Bucknell career. And, uh, and of course, you know, he, his accomplishments since then, he's on going on the board of trustees, you know, guys in the yeah. next summer. So, so, but you know, this, these relationships and this experience at Bucknell and, and uh, Jackson to, echo what everybody else said you can't believe how fast it goes you will never have a better time in your life than you will these these next couple of years and i can only wish that you have the kind of enduring friendships that uh, i and all of us have made through this game and uh, realize that you will you will never uh, be able to give back what you've gotten from this game so uh, just keep trying to give back and for Bucknell, and for Bucknell too. Yes. Well, with that said, uh, that's a that's a great note to close on, and I'm going to turn it back over to Todd. I wish we could spend a few more hours, but we have another uh, Zoom here in about uh, seven minutes that we have to get prepped for. So, Todd, if you would uh, take it away and uh, wrap us up, and gents, thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I, I just love love listening to the stories that you guys tell. So, thanks again. Thanks, Coach. I'm going to turn my attention first to Jackson. And uh, thank you again for joining us tonight. And uh, I hope you took in the great advice you got. I, I, it's, 
you, you can never stop learning. And uh, these guys certainly gave some great advice. I hope you take that back to your teammates. And in addition, I hope this spring you go down to the Naval Academy and you kick those guys right where it counts and, and take that Patriot League championship. We'll all be pulling for you guys and uh, we'll be following you and cheering you all the way. So thanks a lot. And guys, thanks so much for joining. I did want to mention, and I know we don't have enough time to talk about it. And I know we joked around earlier that we might, you know, have some Jeff Rank stories on this call. But I do recall, and Coach Benny can weigh in on this, during one of our calls last night, we heard about a certain freshman member of the golf team who might be the brother of somebody on this call who had to short sheet somebody's bed. And he didn't know it was Coach Rank's bed that he short sheeted. So <laughs> Rob Wagner, we heard that story last night. So we'll, that was awesome. We'll talk that about that awesome. another time, but I, I had to bring it up. So, but guys, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for what Thank you, you Todd. Both Thank as you. members of the golf program when you were here, but maybe more importantly, what you've done for Bucknell and the golf program since you left Bucknell. You know, Jeff hit the nail on the head. We can't uh, have the type of programs we do without the great support we get from our alumni. So thank you so much for that. And then for those of you that tuned in to watch tonight, thank you for doing so and go Bison.